What's going on everybody, Rob Peary here, and today we're gonna to be going over a fun little topic. It's a question, actually, that I get asked all the time, and it's basically, what coffee roaster should I buy? The problem with that question is it really depends on one single thing, and it's your goals. I don't really know your goals a lot of times when people ask me, so therefore it's really hard to answer that question. Now, obviously, there's two main paths. You can either go the home roasting route, just roast for yourself, dive down that little rabbit hole and have fun, experiment, give out coffee to family and friends, or you can eventually plan on going the business route, which is what a lot of people are wanting to do nowadays. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of people just wanting to follow the entrepreneur type lifestyle now. Nothing wrong with that. Do you want to go down the business route? Open up a coffee roastery one day, maybe a coffee shop. You just have to be honest with yourself in the beginning when you're deciding on what type of roaster you want to get. So in this video, I'm going to be focusing mostly on on the home roasting option and discussing best options to kind of begin with and get your toes stuck in the water and stuff like that. In another video that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be teaming up with a couple of local roasteries that have some different type of larger machines, a San Franciscan, a U.S. coffee roaster, and a Loring. And I basically just want to get their opinion, more of an expert opinion, on what they would do different. Are they happy with their purchase? What would they suggest a small roastery kind of start with? So with that being said, let's just dive off into the type of roasters. Now some of these you may have heard of and some of these you may have not depending on your experience but there's air roasters or fluid bed roasters, there's drum roasters, there's electric roasters, there's there's hand roasters, there's like actually roasters where people use a heat gun, and then there are also those dudes done well to the drum up in a Weber grill type roasters, just kind of creating things out of stuff they have laying around at home. A lot of very creative people, some overachievers out there, and you know, more power to them, you know, create your own roaster. And with that being said, which one is right for you. You know, as a home roaster, as somebody just getting into roaster, you may have ambitions of going down the business route one day, but what should you start with? I think one of the best things to start with is literally, it's it's simple, most people already have them. It's basically free, is just start with an iron skillet. Get you a little a metal whisk, order some green coffee from Coffee Bean Corral or Sweet Maria's, throw some green coffee in there and just heat it up and stir it around. It'll give you an idea of basically how roasting works. You'll see the changing of the colors of coffee. You'll also see the scalding and stuff of the coffee. You'll be able to see some of the flaws that the cast iron is actually going to make on the coffee. So I think that's super important because it's one of those things like you're really not spending any money, but you need to spend a little bit of time learning all that. And then that will probably help you make a better decision on which roaster you need to get. With that being said, I kind of go in order of budget. If you want to get into roasting and you just literally want to dip your toe into it, I would say get your little hand roaster. There's many hand roasters out there. I've personally used a couple of them. I've used the Hive before. I like it. I actually made a video on it if you want to check it out. It's a simple little device. It can roast about 150 grams of coffee, depending on your heat source, you know. Once you get the concepts down and stuff like that, obviously you're not going to be making great coffee in your first five to six, ten roasts. It's going to take a little bit, but once you get that concept down and you start realizing like all the variables that go into it and you can start manipulating a few of them, I mean you can get some really great tasting coffee off of a simple hand roaster. There's also the Nouveau. It's a little ceramic type coffee roaster and I'll link all these down below too if you want to check them out. But it roasts a smaller amount of coffee so you may be only able to fit 30 grams in there which is not a whole lot of coffee. So that's going to be one of those decision factors in the beginning too. How long do you want to sit there and you know spend coffee around just to get 30 grams of coffee or do you want to sit there and do one batch and get 150? Obviously the price difference is going to be a little bit depending on you know what sizes and stuff you get so all that you got to take into consideration. For example how many how many batches a week would you have to roast to last you the week? You put those numbers on paper and after you roast for a while, you'll probably really wish you had a tad bit larger roaster. Secondly, I want to go into air roasters. Air roasters are very popular. They're some of the ones that most people start on in the beginning. There's the Fresh Roast SR540 and the SR800. I've heard great things on both. I've also heard bad things on both. So it's one of those things that it's some people are going to like it, some people aren't. There's a guy named Keith Poole. He has a channel too. I'll link it below. Great information for beginner roasters on the fresh roast. He has a lot of kind of detail, some of experiments he does. Definitely check that out if you're interested. Now you can start in just a regular popcorn popper. Problem is I've heard of a lot of them burning up, not lasting too long once you start doing coffee.
coffee, but you can just, you know, try a few little batches out in a little popcorn popper if you have it. It's kind of cheap, a lot of people already have, and you can kind of get them anywhere. It's not like having to order them online, or you know, you probably get one from Target, Walmart, or something like that when you go shopping this weekend. Basically, on air roasters, all it's doing is just pushing hot air up through the beans, you know, tossing the beans around, and the convection energy is basically what's roasting the coffee. You don't have any conduction energy from a hot drum, a hot metal drum. Air roasted coffee, I feel, does taste a little bit different. Not a bad different, not a good different. It's just a different kind of flavor I feel air roasted coffee has over drum roasted coffee. Third on the list is drum roasters. These are probably some of the oldest roasters. A lot of the designs really haven't changed since 100 plus years ago. You have some type of fuel source, either gas or electric, heating up a drum that's being turned by some little motor. The cool thing about the drum roasters is they're robust. They, I mean, they got some pretty high quality little roasters out there. If you get the Caldi roaster, the Hookie 500, I mean, they're, they're, they're tanks. You're not breaking them. I've literally dropped my Caldi off the porch before, you know, probably five feet, still works. I've left it in the back of my truck one time whenever I was going down the road. It bounced all over the place, still works. I mean, you, they, they literally like indestructible little, little devices. So as far as durability goes and just lasting a long time, my little Caldi, I'll have it 20 years from now unless I lose it. It's, it's just a tank. So I would say on the drum roaster side, Caldi's are great. The Hucky 500s, they kind of start getting up a little bit more expensive than your hand roasters, obviously. And some of your fresh roast uh, air roasters but at that point you have to be honest with yourself what is your goal again do you eventually want to go the business route and if so I would venture more towards getting a little drum roaster just kind of learning the very basics of how the gas works how the fuel works how the revolutions work just wrap your head around all the theories and stuff like that experiment with the temperatures if you want to get a little bit bigger spend a little bit more money you can get a little Mill City one kilogram two kilogram um, there's a Bedelli out there there's a bunch of different types of roasters if you get on alibaba or amazon i mean there's tons of little drum roasters on there there's also electric drum roasters kind of like the beamer and the hot top i've heard great things about the hot top i've seen some guys roast on it here a while back and i mean i thought it did great i thought it was pretty cool it's it's easy and what's cool about those units is you can literally just run an extension cord outside plug it into an outlet and you're good to go you don't need like gas and fuel and butane bottles and whatever if you're you know roasting on like a little gas unit so i think that's pretty cool for the hot tops in them it's just plug it into a wall you're good to go and again drum roasters are probably the most common roasters out there right now there's also this thing called sample roasters in the beginning i really couldn't wrap my head around what that meant i just thought any small roaster was a sample roaster but they actually have some precise little small roasters such as the kawa uh, see it a good bit i know a few people that have them there's also the arc roaster check them out seems like a very very good roaster there's also probat sample roasters and most of your larger brands will also have sample roasters and what I also like about a sample roaster is if you do plan on going the business route eventually, I would say maybe get a sample roaster in the beginning. Now they are more expensive than your hand roasters and you know smaller drum roasters, the quality and all that. But the quality and the manipulation and the data that you're going to get from them is going to be on a different level. I know the Ikawa, you can basically get profiles, download them in, and basically roast to that profile that somebody's already programmed. I'm actually going to be doing a video on the Ikawa in the future. For of mine down the road has one so yeah definitely check out some of the sample roasters if you want to go that route they're very data heavy little roasters so it's more for the people that are very serious about it so these are just some of the roasters out there 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 are tons of roasters out there there's probably hundreds and hundreds if you look on amazon or alibaba you'll find tons of roasters and if you use the search hashtag roaster on Instagram, I mean, you can literally just scroll through hundreds and hundreds and probably thousands of different types of roasters. If you see any you like, click on it. Usually they're like linked out to whoever it is and stuff like that, and you can check them out. So again, the best way to figure out what roaster you want is to figure out what your goal is and then use that to make your purchasing decision. A few other resources. I know in Scott Ray's book, he goes into a pretty good detail on what you need to look for in a roaster to kind of fit you. I will link his book below as well. He also has a blog. I would definitely say check that out as well. It will give you a lot of knowledge just about roasting so that way when you go and buy a roaster you will have a good bit of knowledge and that way you can go make a pretty informed uh, purchase. And also there's Steve with Mill City Roasters. He has a very good YouTube video. It's like a no-nonsense video too which is what I really like about Steve. It's just a no-nonsense video on what coffee roaster you should pick. And what's cool is it's not really even a sales pitch for Mill City. It's just 
Be realistic with yourself. What are your goals? What do you want to do? Super cool video if you want to check it out. My personal opinion is to probably just start with a little quality. If you want to dip your toe into it, definitely get like a little hand roaster. But if you spend a little bit of money on a quality roaster, what you're going to basically save in buying specialty coffee over the course of a year, you're going to pay for your roaster over, over the course of a year pretty easily, if not sooner, depending on how much coffee you roast and drink. After you roast 100, 200 batches with the quality roaster and you want to get something else, one, you have been in the roasting game long enough at that point to make a very informed decision, and two, you'll kind of know what you're looking for after that. And again, lastly, I'm going to be working on a follow-up video to this one on basically what coffee roaster should you buy if you're going the business route. What I want to go into is more like what size do you need to actually be profitable? Is there kind of this unspoken of limit like where if you get a two kilogram machine, how many hours and how much coffee do you have to roast taking the average price and cost of everything before? you're actually profitable. It, does it even make sense to buy a two kilogram machine to start a business with? I kind of want to go into those questions with people that are in the business. That way I can provide a better answer that's kind of a more on a collective base. Again, I'll link some of the roasters in the books that I discussed in the video in the links below. Definitely check out Steve's video, super helpful. I've also created a coffee, um, how to become a coffee roaster video. If you wanna check it out, you may have already checked it out. It's pretty informative. I just go into basically where you get all the knowledge to become a coffee roaster. I'm also doing a podcast. It's gonna be super cool. It's gonna be a coffee roaster slash coffee farmer podcast. And I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I wanna talk about kind of transparent things like where's the money go? How much do the farmers get? How much does the processing plans and get like how much do the importers and all that get so i want to kind of dive into the weeds of like farmer roaster processor the relationships and how they all kind of intertwine and I, yeah this thing is gonna be super cool so if you want to support that i did start a patreon for that last week of july is when i'm gonna be launching so we look forward to that love y'all peace out thanks for this channel thanks for helping me thanks for helping it grow uh this is all because of you next video coming up is gonna be a vlog on me basically setting my Pedelli two kilogram coffee roaster back up Eventually, I'm going to do a full coffee roast review on it. And that's pretty much it, guys. I truly appreciate y'all watching, tuning in, learning about some coffee roasters. I hope this helped. I hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. If you have any suggestions or if there's any roasters that you just have found that you've ordered and you really like, please let me know in the comments below. That way everybody can kind of see. I'm going to get off here. I've got to go to bed. I've got to get up. I've got to do the day job tomorrow, you know? I'm going to go live that American dream, baby. So, peace out. Love y'all. If y'all need anything, hit me up. You were drinking wine and you were speaking Portuguese. I was making lots of noise busking on the city streets. I came back from Brooklyn, but you didn't come back for me.